Hi, welcome to the Dream Factory community. I'm your hostess, Nancy Cantor. And the Dream Factory community is here in the Ashland area. We also have chapters in Concord and Reading, Brattleboro, Vermont, and we also have a virtual community that people do online. The purpose of the Dream Factory community is to support women in taking on their lives, their work, and their world. And the great byproduct of that is that people actually live their dreams. And it's a community where people support one another support one another in doing that. And I find on the show, I love to interview people who I think are really good examples of living their dreams, but also in addition to that, helping other people live their dreams. So today I'm speaking with Sarah Morrow. She is a singer, she's a songwriter, and she's just a whole lot of fun. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. I'm really <laughs> glad that you're here. I'm um, glad to be here. The first question I always ask my guests, given that this is called the Dream Factory, is what has your experience been in the Dream Factory? How has it supported you in living your dreams? Well, the Dream Factory, first of all, had me see my dream in the first place and articulate it in a way that had it be real. Um, it also made it possible, you know, in everyday, real time, small steps, small goals into big goals. You know, the word dream often kind of intimidates us, especially us women. It's sort of like, oh yeah, but I can't have that. I dream about it, but I can't have that. So the Dream Factory has given me the tools and the structure that I need to really keep doing what I love to do and, um, and create newly what my dream even is. Nice. So it's kind of an ongoing support structure. Absolutely. We're kind of moving through and taking the steps. and Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and I, I actually agree with you. So many times people think of dreams as kind of airy-fairy or too big or the things we entertain ourselves with. Right. But never really are in action about. Exactly. And I, I'd have to say the Dream Factory is not that. It really does help people get clear what are the things they aspire to and helps them to, you know, gives them accountability and structures that allow them to be in action. Well, not only that, but if you don't have a dream and you aren't in action, you're the minority in this group, you know? Right, right Where, that's true. Whereas at my day job or even in some musical circles, it's like, oh, you're dreaming? You're dreaming again. You're a dreamer. But at the Dream Factory, it's like, no, actually, we're going to hold you to account for that. Yeah. yeah, they actually take your dreams seriously. That's right. And it helps you to take them seriously. That's right. All right, well, that's a good segue into saying, well, let's hear a little bit more about your dream around music. Okay, well, I have always been a musician in some capacity. My whole life, I'm blessed to have been born into a musical family. I've been singing since the time I was speaking. Um, and I've been in a lot of different musical roles and I've had a lot of musical experiences. Um, my background is in classical music and opera and my parents are musicians, my brothers are musicians, my dad was my music teacher growing up. Oh, really? So that's just been part of my life. It was never, it was never like, I dream about being a musician. It was like, no, actually, you're gonna go to school and get trained, because that's, that's what we do as Maros. <laughs> um, so I did that, and it took me a while to figure out what, what is my niche, and what particularly do I want, what dream, which dream do I really want to come true in the field of music? Um, it's only been within the last few years as an adult that I've started songwriting and I just really enjoy it. You know, I haven't written that many songs, but the few that I've written, I get really great feedback from people and I get a really great response and I enjoy it and it comes sort of naturally to me. So that I've been doing more and the Dream Factory has really given me the confidence to do that. You know, before it was sort of oh, I'll write a couple songs, but I'll just sing them at open mics and maybe someone will like it or maybe some band will pick it up someday. But at Dream Factory, it's like, actually, how about you write two a month and share them with us and keep doing it. So that's really been a treat to challenge. Myself. Okay, so you're, you're in an accountability circle and they've encouraged you to write two songs a week, a, a month. Yeah, yeah, yes. if I can write two songs a month. And not only is my circle really great about holding me to account and making sure I actually do that, but they help me with my lyrics. They help me say, that's great, that's not so great, that's clear, that's not very clear. Um, I also have a trio. There are two women 
who are, you know, also my accountability partners in the Dream Factory, which is convenient. But they're, you know, we're a band, and they tell me when my lyrics don't make any sense, and they partner with me ongoingly so that it's not a lonely journey, so that it's not just some noise in my head that I put down on paper, and who knows if it lands. Um, so I'm really blessed to have a great trio. We're called Diva's Daughters. Oh, I like and that name. We perform around town. They help me arrange the tunes. They help me perform the tunes. Um, I am sort of the, the creator, the songwriter, the arranger. But without my accountability circle with the Dream Factory and without those two ladies that are also fellow musicians, I would not be anywhere near where I'm at now. That's great. And how would you describe where you're at? Like, where are you playing? What kinds of things are you doing? Where I'm at right now is I'm just doing a lot of jams, if you will, open mics, um, house concerts. I occasionally play out at bars. But I play the mandolin a lot. I really enjoy playing mandolin. And it's hard to just do a solo show as a soprano who plays the mandolin. It's not necessary. You know, you kind of need a band. And aside from my trio, who I do like singing with, I don't really have a band. Uh, but I like where I'm at. It's, I'm in a very creative space right now. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm using my classical background. I'm using my arranging skills to just build up enough songs and repertoire and skills to be able to produce a solo album and then hopefully be in a band um, down the line. But right now, I'm just figuring out my sound, you know, sort of my niche, my message. And I'm trying to get good at the mandolin. <laughs> and trying to what? <laughs> to also get good at the mandolin. Fantastic. In the process, yeah. That's awesome. I, I've always played guitar since I was about 15. Um, but I, I have more fun playing mandolin. <laughs> you like that better? Right now, yeah. And then would you have any, do you have a sense of what your message is in your music? Lately, because of the Dream Factory and because of where I'm at and because I'm starting to think bigger, I think my main message is go big, keep, keep growing, keep going, keep thinking bigger. Um, like I said, with my dream, I used to be like, oh, I'll play some songs and I'll cover, you know, I like Sarah McLachlan and Jewel and the Indigo Girls, so I'll just learn their songs and I'll sing them at a party. But, you know, now I'm like, no, think, you know, Dream Factory's helped me think way bigger. Like, go on tour for four years, go on the road, write a song, put out an album, start a band. You know, these are the things I've been entertaining and trying to share with other women. No, I think that's fantastic. I know you did a Kickstarter, too, as well. Yeah, yeah. The trio that, I, like I've mentioned, the Divas Daughters group that I'm involved with pretty heavily, we, we did a very successful Kickstarter in order to create an EP, an extended play five-song album um, that we have for sale that's been pretty successful. It's helped us get a lot of gigs and a lot of leverage. And it was really fun, but I, I kind of want to do one for myself. I kind of want a solo album next. Mm. Um, and yeah, Kickstarter is a great, a great way to do it, but it does take a lot of money and a lot of, uh, a lot of support. Well, I, but I like how you're, you are thinking bigger. You know, you, you are part of a trio, but you're also thinking, well, there's something I want to say individually. Mm. So I think it's really nice that you're expanding your view of yeah. what you can do. I am. I'm exploring that right now. Yeah. I can't really say I know exactly what I want to do. I love bluegrass. I love mandolin. But when I write songs, they don't necessarily fall in that genre. So like you said, I'm just expanding and exploring right now. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I do, I do a lot of coaching, right? And, you know, I'm actually coaching somebody who's in a corporation. And it's really interesting to coach people to think beyond just having a job. Mm. You know, people just tend to think, well, this is my job. These are the parameters inside of which I dwell, mm -hmm. and I will go no further. Mm. But I think this whole thing, you know, with Dream Factory, I also do the Entrepreneur's Connection. This thing about entrepreneurial thinking is a really big deal because it really encourages people to think in terms of they really can create whatever they want. Mm. You know, but there is a process to it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of what we teach in the Dream Factory. Like, you do need a vision. Absolutely. You know, you do need a plan. You have to go beyond how you ordinarily sabotage yourself. And you definitely need a community of support. And I think you've mentioned several times that the people around you really do support you. Absolutely. And there are times when I, I did not think of myself as a songwriter. 
I did not like the first couple songs I wrote. I did not, like you said, the sabotage thing, it's not just, oh, I'm terrible at this, I shouldn't do it. It's sometimes people hear things that I didn't even think of, mm -hmm. of like what's possible for me. And that's, like you said, it helps me think way outside of my, my parameters and my job and my role. You know, I didn't think I'd be sitting here, you know, I went to school for opera and now I'm telling you how I love bluegrass and mandolin and I'm a songwriter. It's like, wait a minute, did I really just say that? Yeah, how did that happen? How did that happen? But yeah. yet it's so who I am right now that you have to keep talking to people and explaining what you love and listening to what they take from that to really shape your path, you know? Yeah, so I mean, to me it sounds like it isn't always having a straight path. Definitely and then not. you're walking down that straight path because, you know, I, I have this phrase that I say, if you're going to put your ladder on a building and spend a lot of time climbing, you may, better make sure it's on the right building, <laughs> right? <laughs> Makes sense? But there's also other ways to create. I mean, there's definitely the masculine way to create where goals, actions, got to move, got to do it, you know, mm. by when. All that stuff is fantastic. Like, it's good to have that skill to, mm. to develop that muscle. Because mm -hmm. if you don't develop that muscle, it could be kind of challenging to go anywhere. But then I think there's also more of the feminine way of creating where you're more open and you're allowing community and, and the conversations that you're in to shape where you might go mm. and to enjoy the journey and mm. the ride, that it isn't just a straight fix and got to get there but that you're allowing who you are to be uncovered and unfolded. Mm. It's interesting you mention that because yeah. I have a very masculine approach. Okay. Well, by nature, I'm very goal oriented and you know, it's, I don't know if it's the older brothers, the dad, the musicians, competitive world. Um, but yeah, I, Dream Factory has really taught me to like leave room to listen, to open, to just stay in the, in the space of creativity, that's actually been really challenging for me. And that's why I say the songwriting thing even is very new. I finally feel more tapped in to the feminine energy, to the wisdom, to the eternal that <coughs> does allow for good songwriting. You know, I, it, it, I resisted that for a long time and I still do because it's like, nope, I have a goal. I said I'd have this done by Friday, and I just have to get something down so that I'm right, and I, that, I'm, that I do that, that I honor my word. <coughs> and I'm realizing that's not always the best approach, because you're going to get something kind of rigid. You're going to get something maybe not as creative and, and you know, expressive as you would with, with the more feminine approach. So I'm definitely learning how to balance the two. Yeah. Um, and I also... You know, I, I recently declared that in three years' time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave my day job. So that's been a really big game um, that you basically, what I like about Dream Factory is, you know, you, you, you do look four, five, three, ten years in the future um, and ask yourself, you know, even if the path is crooked, where do you want to be? I'm a receptionist at a biotech company. You know, believe it or not, I don't want to be there in five years. You don't? So... The question has to become, well, where do you want to be? Because there's an action to be taken every single day if you actually want to get out of that. You know, I realize that I've got to get out of that and I've got to put steps in now to make that happen. So it does take some sort of masculine planning and some goal orientation, uh, particularly around finances and skills and relationships that I need to have in place before I just put in my notice. Of course. But then... You know, there's so much more. There's a lot of conversations and a lot of writing and a lot of creativity that needs to take place to have me mentally prepared and spiritually prepared to make that sort of a leap. Yeah, it's really, you know, I, I said a lot of times that you have to be two-headed. Mm. You know, that you do need to look out there, okay, so three years from now, this is where I want to be, so here's a logical path. These are the things I need to take care of financially. What do I need to look at? Yeah. But I think that gets you in the game. Very you much know so. that you're going to be in action. You have intentions. I think having intentions is key. You know, just I have an intention that this is going to happen, and then you're open to the relationships that can come your way, to the creativity that's going to be called. Like some of it can't be mapped out. Like you can't know. Totally. Some of it you just can't know. So it's being able to be with the unknown and mm -hmm. still moving ahead and staying open, and keeping that intention strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and being able to 
kind of get your hands around the levers and dials of the creation process. Because some of it is moving forward and some of it is just staying open. Mm. So how do you know that that's a little bit tricky? Very tricky. You know, because I think we're used to the mind needs to know. Yeah. And it's great. It's great to cultivate a mind that can see steps and can be concrete. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's all different learning styles. There's mm. all different ways that people approach things. Right. So it's, it's good that you're open. And um, I do like the Dream Factory because I think it is kind of teaching more of a feminine creative process. Like we say we teach a dream creation process. But it's, it, it, I think it's the best of the masculine and the feminine. I agree. The fact that we sit monthly in a circle, hold each other to account, and create goals. Just, the, just taking that action once every 30 days, that's unique in and of itself. And then to have the community and, like you said, the spiritual, the intention. It's not just about goals. It's not just about dreams. We sort of talk about, well, what is a goal? What is a dream? What's an intention? What can you map out and what can you not? Where can you allow more of the of the bubbly spontaneity, where can you, where do you need to crack down? What are the areas that you're really struggling on, like consistently kind of suffering? And that's what I love about the Dream Factory. It's like, oh, you can look, this was a struggle last month. Look, it's a struggle again this month. I need support in this area. I'm not gonna just hide away from it. So that's been, that's been key. Um, I also really love, one thing I've really learned is the Dream Factory focuses on really taking on your life your work and your world. The first three or four months of my circle, I made a goal in my work, my work, and my work. <laughs> your work, your work, your work. And then when okay, those okay. goals failed, I just made more goals to proceed my work, 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 work. And it became this like, oh, why did I only write one song? Or why did I only meet that one person and go to that one open mic? Like that was so insufficient. But then it was like, oh, I know because I didn't balance my world, my relationships, my, my personal life. You know, it's a very holistic approach. And mm. I finally have mastered how to actually accomplish goals monthly and take on all three. And oh look, there's so much more progressing in my songwriting and in my work when my life is in balance, when I make it to the gym, when I get a good night's sleep, when I'm you know, sitting with my journal for songwriting for 10 minutes a day versus, you know, once every two weeks for an hour, if I don't feel the inspiration, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's, it's about balance, like you said. That's okay. fantastic. Yeah. No, it's always great to hear because, um, you know, you design things and you think they're a good design, mm. you know, like it should work, but it's great to hear how it does work for people. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you're a really good example of appreciating the structure of it. Thank you. You know, and taking that on. And I think that's what we're hoping for all our members is that, mm -hmm. you know, everybody needs a little different something. But I think the structures that we have, anybody can tap into mm -hmm. and, and learn a process that can help them move forward. And that the end result is that you get into the natural rhythm that would allow you to live your dreams. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's a great segue. The other thing I was thinking is like, the Dream Factory has taught me about the long game. You know, okay, so I didn't write that song this week that I said I would. But look at where I've come, look at how far I've come just this year. You know, we keep this book. And I get to look back at the year, at the, what, I, what I accomplished. All the songwriting community that I've built for myself and the jams that I've been to and the things I couldn't play and I couldn't sing and I didn't even know last year. And it does, it's helped me see the long, the, this is a long game. We are all here. A dream is not gonna happen overnight. You know, even in three years, if I meet my goal of being able to quit my day job, okay, great, now I'm at the bottom of another mountain. I'm still playing the long game of being a creator, being a songwriter, being a great performer. Mm. Um, and I'm, I am, I'm in it for the long haul, and there's just so many ways to tackle this feat, but it's worth pursuing, you yeah. know? Well, you're in it for the journey. That's right. Yeah, and the journey's I think, the reward. Well, the journey's the reward, and then the dream is, I guess, the cherry on top of the sundae. <laughs> you know, like, like I read the Pan Mass Challenge, you know, which is bike a and you know, really at the heart of it, we're, we're uh, raising money for cancer research. 
we're, it's really not about cycling. Right. But getting to do that two-day bike ride with Talk your friends, with your team, you know, it's like that's the reward. Mm. And hopefully you get good weather mm -hmm. and, you know, it's not pouring for a whole day, <laughs> hopefully. But, you know, but that's, the, that's like the cherry on the sundae. Mm. But the truth is the work's in the, you know, in the fundraising, you know, like for you, the work's in the day-to-day the -day operations. But mm -hmm. I always feel like if you learn something, you can apply it anywhere. You know, mm. I do a lot of business development stuff, and a lot mm. of times I try to focus people on, don't do five businesses, do one business. Like, figure this one out. What mm. is this business development process? You know, in the dream factor, it's what's this dream creation process? And if you master it and you have insight into it, you can apply it to any dream that you have. Mm. You know, it's like you're in the process of figuring out the levers and dials in terms of how you create things, mm. of what kind of support that you need. We give you a nice basic support, but you know, different people tap into different things. Sure. And people travel at different rates, you know, because they're just in different places. Mm. So, but once you create this dream, you can create another dream. I have found that, you know, you know, your first couple of visions when you're when you're the beginning of the processes of being a visionary. And at first you get kind of scared away from one, you change it a million times. But now I'm like, oh, I know this process. Sure, it can be, yeah, okay. Trio today? Sure, I'll play trio today. Oh, solo act? Sure, I can do solo act. And it's, you know, it's like you say, you can apply the skills that you develop and you can dream anywhere. You can dream anywhere and you can dream anything and you can, really can create anything. Mm. But that's, that's the fun of it, mm -hmm. you know, that you really get to do that. So I just appreciate your dreaming with us and that we all get to dream together and support each other. It's just nice. It's just so nice Likewise. to see how you keep moving forward. And I love your music. So Thank you. that's, that's such a wonderful benefit, you know, Thank being you. part of the journey with you. So now we have an opportunity to hear, what, one or two of your songs now? Sure. I think it's a perfect segue. So okay, let's all hear the dreaming, let's hear it. Okay. From a dream she stirs, the tides rise. It's a dream, it's all hers, no compromise. When the twisted vines of life tangle her in strife, the eternal guides her, true and wise. Another day she wakes to see what in no way resembles who she'll be. People say it's all a mystery, but the dreamer's way set her free. He plunder, he plays her like a fiddle, rolls like thunder. He speaks in riddles, he groaned and squandered. They made a home and then he wandered, got swept under, little by little. Another day she wakes to see what in no way resembles who she'll be. People say it's all a mystery. The dreamer's way is her free. Get herself packed, the train will take her out of town. Squealing tracks like an old familiar sound. She's fed up with this hunger. It's getting old, wishing she were younger. No turning back when you're outbound. Another day she'll wait to see when it no way resembles who she'll be. is about a journey and it's based on the three women in my trio. i 
This world is not 